that music. <laughs> For a minute at a time With John and Will And I guess you just rhyme It's Bad Minutes Hello And welcome to another week of Bat Minute Returns The podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and recall In more ways than one Tim Burton's 1992 sequel to Tim Burton's 1989 Batman movie, Batman Returns. I am one of the hosts, Niall McGowan. I am your number one candidate. I am John Parker. And today we are joined, not not surprisingly, by a guest. We have... What? Yes. Most unorthodox. I thought that was Darth Vader there coming in for a second. What? (laughs) (laughs) But uh, yes, we have a friend. Actually... uh, Supposedly, comedian Polly Preston, I guess, would be. Actually, maybe we should do, uh, cut this bit. How? What, what way would you like to be introduced, Polly? What would What would you say is your your occupation? I uh, I don't know really. I'm just Polly Preston, part of Fire Donkey Productions. I mean, we we run a cult seminar for new recruits, so <laughs> <laughs> we could go down the real route, uh, the real ro- route, route, yeah, of you know trying to recruit more people to the Church of Phil. Or is that too weird? I don't know. Yeah, that, that's really why we've got you on. It's just to spread the word. <laughs> spread the word of Phil. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so as a, a more official introduction, uh, cult recruiter from the Church of Phil, <laughs> Polly Preston. <laughs> How are you, Polly? I'm very well, thank you. Phil be with you. <laughs> <laughs> and with you. Should mention for the first, uh, just, just maybe give some context to the week. I've known Polly for, what, 11 years. And we've never spoken before. We've never actually talked in person. And we've still not talked in person because we're not even in the same room. So this is like we're inching every decade. We'll get like a little <laughs> bit closer to like, and then maybe by the time we're in our 50s, we can be like proper friends and stuff. It'll be great. Oh, are we not proper friends? Well, I mean, like Aww. in physical, <laughs> in, in, the, in the terms of like been able to sit in the same room and whatnot and we're, hang out casually. Yeah, We're not we flesh the, friends. Not flesh friends, no. We're not flesh we, friends, no. We were textual friends for 11 years, and now it's bumped up to audio friends. And now, who knows what the future might bring. <laughs> oh, I'm guessing after this, you're never going to speak again. Yeah. Jesus. This is, this is not, the end. No. <laughs> this is the people getting to witness the death of a friendship right here this week. Oh, wow. Wow. It's, it's just... a beautiful moment. <laughs> well, I'll be in Liverpool at some point, in which case I can just avoid you there, so... Oh, yeah, make sure to give me a call so I'll know where not to be. That'll be. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, th- we're also here to talk about Minute 10 of Batman Returns. Uh, minute 10 begins with the, ox- the action packed uh, view of a bunch of men leaving a room for about 20 seconds. <laughs> and then it ends <laughs> with the, the mayor, Mayor Roscoe Jenkins, uh, preparing to take a speech. So. Ooh, the tension is unbearable. <laughs> it is a bit of a kind of weird start to a week because it, it, it must be a good... I haven't timed it exactly, but it must be like 10 seconds of these guys just... Well, we do we get a brief moment of Chip Shrek saying, uh, you know, masses. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and everyone promptly... And without conversation, they're not even talking to each other as they leave the room. They're all just like, yep, we're going. And then there's a bunch of chair creaking and then they all file out and it's very, very awkward. Yeah, I found that odd that he, he said, uh, said that it's time to address the masses to his dad there. Because, I mean, he's not he's not Lenin. <laughs> Where's this come from? Man? There really aren't that many people there. So, I mean, there's a lot of people, but there's not masses of people. Mm. No, no. I think we were talking about this last week, actually, that... Like, are the people deterred? Because in the previous movie, the Joker, you know, got everyone together and then tried to gas them all to death. Has that put people off going to big meetings? Maybe they don't remember being gassed. Or... <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, actually. <laughs> so they're probably sitting there going, well, what are the chances a bunch of crazy clowns are going to show up twice? Like, that's like, of course, <laughs> nothing's going to happen this time. Don't be ridiculous. He is handing out presents, though, so it's possible that that's the incentive to go. 
Well, well, well mm. you know, we'll get to that. And uh... oh, sorry, I'm I'm jumping ahead seconds. Yeah, that's um, uh, that's the next that's the next minute. That's a whole other episode. Oh my god, <laughs> you wouldn't be the first to want to just steam ahead. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> all the best stuff is coming. <laughs> like Paul is just like, so next they bring out this giant <laughs> present, and that's the end of the that's the end of the movie. I'll see you. <laughs> uh, I would I would like to point out that the table decoration. This is how desperate it's got with this clip. They look like <laughs> little little spaceships. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They look very distinctly like uh, the Martian spaceships in Mars Attacks, which, of course, was directed by Tim Burton. <laughs> which so is a whole other oh. film. Maybe that's where it was inspired. Um, who knows? Yeah, it could be that yeah. it was, Tim Burton was like, I really want to have... I, I love those lamps in the one movie I did. So if we could just have those back and just use those as the spaceships, that'd be great. Maybe he always wanted to do Mars Attacks because wasn't it um, a trading card set to begin with? Yeah. And then the movie was inspired by the trading card. Yeah, that could be. The, the, um, yeah. It could be the, like the Mars Attacks was in his mind. Well, just even just general 1950s B sci-fi movies. He could have been like when they were designing the sets, he was like, oh, maybe not even Tim Burton. It could have been because the people working for him know that he likes this kind of stuff. So it's like, oh, well, we made the lamps that look like little spaceships and stuff. He would like that. And he probably came in and he's like, oh, my God, you guys, this is so special. Um, thank you for doing this for me. And it would have been a nice day on <laughs> and set. And actually, next to, next, next, is it Chip? Is Chip the son? Yeah. I'm showing my knowledge there. Chip, uh, in the first <laughs> second, he stood next to a very sci-fi looking pillar. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Which is also maybe a bit Mars Attacks. Yeah, th- these pillars are bizarre to me. They, they always caught my eye, even when I was a kid. I was always a bit like, what's the deal with these things? Because they look what's like... What's the deal with the pillars? Yeah, what's, what's the deal? With the... Exactly. Because, uh, yeah, they look like a bunch of cups stacked up. It doesn't Giant look like... Giant silver a... cups. Yeah. Yeah. It's just very much like, I don't know who... I, if I had a big swanky office, I guess people who have big swanky offices put horrible things in them all the time. But this just <laughs> seems a bit like, I don't know, it's a bit random. I don't know if I'd like that there. <laughs> I can fully get on they board put... with the, the painting of Chip Shrek and Max Shrek. That's totally... <laughs> I'd have that in any office. But the... uh, However, looking at the painting now, the artist has avoid, avoided drawing the hands properly. It just looks like he's got a claw almost, mm. which is maybe <laughs> like the penguin's hand. So maybe he's the true father of the, the penguin. <gasps> oh, my God. oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised myself there. Because we did comment last week that Max Shrek is always wearing gloves. Well, if he took off the gloves and he had the webbed hands. Oh, that way amazing. Well, there was originally... Have we mentioned this already, Niall? I'm not sure. There was originally the idea that um, Max was going to be uh, the Penguin's brother. Yeah, yeah, that's in the the, the, the first Waters draft, I believe. Yeah, yeah there's a whole... Which I like that as a concept. I think that's fun. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of it myself. Um, I just... I think after Empire Strikes Back, any more attempts of like, turns out these two were related the whole time. <laughs> and I've never been a fan of it. It's always just like, ah. Oh, I was just going to say, you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. And it's just a life lesson, really. <laughs> so yeah. The thing is, though, like, if it just turned out like, oh, you're my brother. If I met someone I didn't like who turned out to be my long lost brother, it'd just be like, oh, we don't have to have any contact. Like, it's very much like that's eh, fine. No, nope. <laughs> just uh, just forget about it. In movies, though, it's always in like, oh, that means that now they're joined for life. They have to practically live together. <laughs> no, <laughs> they just you just go like, oh, that's fine. I just you know, yeah. just be like, that's yeah. I have a brother out there somewhere, and I don't really care. <laughs> and there you nope, go. You've Done. got to be best friends. It's the odd couple. <laughs> no, but the painting. I think Chip, the the painting of Chip specifically, he looks far more masculine and a lot older than the shot of chip standing right next to it i don't really understand what they're doing there he looks more like a modern day carry yules mm. yeah. <laughs> that's that's very... it's a very strange choice for that's... me to use as masculine say, that's very, that's very <laughs> yeah. specific i think it was like of john was literally just watching like saw the second before this he's like i've just got carry yules on my mind that's, that's that's why i went for him i've always got carry yules on my mind I'm telling you. and i've always wondered how his surname was pronounced so i thank you both um, <laughs> I wouldn't trust us to pronounce things properly. <laughs> okay. And then we could bump into them in the street and it'll be like, oh, Carrie Yules. He'd be like, it's Elwes. Jesus Christ, people, get it right. <laughs> oh, just be shunned by the public. Um, the painting, it could be uh, Max 
father sat down and then Mac as an older man, maybe. Mm. Or the it mother. Could that could be a woman sat there. It could be his yeah. mother. That could be Who the. Ch- That'd be amazing. It could be Max and and his wife. That could be Mrs. Shrek. And it's like, oh, oh yeah, the gold oh. old ship's looks came from his mother's side, and she just like you know, was that di- kind of Diane Keaton fashion was popular there, like women dressed in the suits <laughs> and stuff. And like, yeah, this is this was Absolutely. this painting was commissioned straight after Annie Hall came out, and there you go. That's uh, that's entirely that's explained that away. <laughs> That's a that's a sturdy mother, a strong mother, a uh, a Russian farming mother. <laughs> he, he needs a little uh, headscarf on. <laughs> but yeah, then we do get once everyone's left. Uh, Selena does a little sort of, uh, you know, because she seems to have very low self esteem, starts sort of berating herself and mocking her own uh, Corn actions. Dogs. Yeah, Corn doing dogs. the whole like, oh, actually, well, that was more of a suggestion. Um, it's a you know we'll get into the characterization of Selena Kyle later on once we get to actually Catwoman actually been on screen because that's when you can get into all the dirt with Catwoman. But the, are you suggesting that these are the same person? But the, Selena Kyle is Catwoman. <laughs> well, she does have glasses on, so it's very Clark Kent. Mm. Um, but uh, they could be different. I wish she turned into Catwoman and kept the glasses on. To me, that would just complete it. <laughs> I'll be just like uh, Ghost World, though, when she just has the glasses on top of the Catwoman mask. And this be the... That's a good point, actually. Yeah, that's probably why it's in my mind. <laughs> but, um, yeah. but yeah, then we just... Uh, you know, the, the, this characterization of Selena Kyle is much more, you know, browbeaten and run down. And then she does the... Yeah, starts her version of swearing... Is saying all oh, you know, stupid corn dog, and then repeating the words corn dog, corn dog. Now again, this seems to be coming uh, a trait with this season. Corn dogs, not a thing over here. That's a very American thing. I've never come mm. across. I've come across what corn dogs are, which is essentially battered sausages. That's a staple. Yeah, they're really nice. Yeah, <laughs> but that's a staple in like Straban, where I come from. That like the, the town, and I, like when you know through the neighboring towns as well, but. Upon arriving in England, you know, years ago, discovered that, uh, you know, t- t- battered sausages weren't a common thing, which you can get them in any, any chippy you go to. Uh, no, that's a Liverpool thing, right? That they're not. Everywhere else I've lived in the country, battered sausage is the other thing you get at the chip shop other than the fish. Oh, oh absolutely. Oh. Yeah. Without doubt. Yeah. Okay. Liverpool's weird and strange and nothing's normal. <laughs> hey, we're not doing it. We're not having them in, mate. What do they <laughs> What do they have instead? Do they have anything in, to replace the battered sausage? I don't know if there's anything uh... distinctly you get in Liverpool uh, takeaways that's that's exclusive to them, as far as I know. You'd think the, scouts, the chip but... shops here... No, the chip shops here do a lot of Chinese dishes, specific, like... And salt and pepper chips, Niall, that's the big Liverpool thing, where it's like just peppers chopped up on chips. It's very weird. <laughs> it's really nice. I've never ordered salt and pepper chips because I thought it was literally just like peppercorn. That, that, I didn't realize it was actual Yeah, peppers. that's what I thought, but it's not. It's, it's onions and peppers. Uh, that sounds kind of gross, though. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's really nice. Honest to God, get it. Uh, get it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> maybe today's the day. Go get it now. <laughs> Seize the day. <sighs> take it. Actually. Just take it. Oh, well, I just she's she's very beaten by sexism in this office environment, you know. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, just point that out there. Mm. And the uh, previous no, film it, as I... well, everyone's very sexist towards women, but it was eighty nine. It's not an excuse, but. <laughs> well, I like the way in this though. It's it's kind of it, obviously it's it, jumping ahead slightly, but it builds up to her revenge on the on the sexist work environment. I think that's an interesting spin on it. Mm. Yeah. Because I mean, you're not supposed to be uh, laughing at her and backing the treatments, I suppose. You're on her side already, I think, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Although, you get, too, you get like a, a real vibe. The fact that her her swearing is the same corn dog instead of anything else. It's kind of like, it was making me think that either, you know, you know obviously, the, the, what you're taking away from it is that she's very sort of mild-mannered, where, you know, she, consider that, she would consider that swearing. That she, even in private, she wouldn't just say, you know... Or something like that. She's actually, <laughs> and I will say as well that um, later on in the original Waters draft, the the corn dog thing pops up again when Selena's flustered. When when she is Catwoman, she at some points goes into Selena Kyle mode and starts saying corn dog and stuff again. And it's like, oh yeah, it's just kind of showing a bit more of a split personality between the the yeah. character of Catwoman and the character of Selena here. Whereas in this finished movie it's like well once that break happens she's one way and that's the that's the way she is the rest of the movie 
But no, I like that it, it, she would retain that because obviously it's it, like she thinks she's being as well. Like of course it means she's being corny. Yeah, is also what it means. Um, and I I think that's good because she is and. It, Calling herself a corn dog is in itself corny. <laughs> and then she acknowledges that it is as well, which is hilarious. Yeah. I love that. I just wonder, though, would she have said hot dog? But then because since the, the reign of Mayor Borg has ended, any mention of hot dogs <laughs> is now forbidden in Gotham. So she has to go with corn dog, which is basically it's a hot, it's a hot dog on a stick. Yeah, but oh. she's also Catwoman. She can't say hot dog. Oh, good point. Oh, <laughs> it would be things that might indicate that she's in some way attracted to dogs, and then it's like, oh, it's a hot dog. <laughs> so no, I can't do that. Better be corn dog. Also, um, <laughs> in the I've frozen it on a, a clip here, and her head is in line with the cat statue in the back, which is maybe a sign of things to come. Who knows? Oh, well spotted. Yeah, yeah. nice one. I'd say definitely. That's why but, I'm here. Yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> That's the uh, I'm sharp sharp at this whole corn dog thing. Now I find out that like batter sauce because I might just go out one and jam a stick into it just so I can have the experience of having a corn dog. Because I always associate it with um, there's something about Mary because she the Cameron Diaz has that little bit where she's just talking about like there aren't enough meats on sticks and it's you know you get fudgicles, you get popsicles, lollipops, all this stuff. You don't get meats on sticks. And I always remember that scene because I think and I can't track this down anywhere on the internet now. But I had read somewhere that that joke had originally been because the Farley brothers who made There's Something About Mary did episodes of Seinfeld. Mm. And it's a very Seinfeld thing to say, like, there aren't enough meats on sticks and that kind of stuff. I was thinking the same thing. And I think it was either, I remember reading either that they had pitched it to Larry David and he said no, or that they had come across it in a Seinfeld script themselves and were like, we really like that. Can we buy that dialogue from you? Like, literally. We just want the hot dog bit because we just want to put it in our movie. And I can't find any any confirmation of whether that was... It could, for all I know, it could have been in an episode of Seinfeld they were in already. Maybe they already had someone going, oh, there's not enough meats on sticks. And But I can't track it down. I've Googled it for all it's worth. And, oh. you know, short of going through all of Seinfeld again, which I wasn't prepared to do oh. in the preparation for this week. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, that uh, anyone knows, by all means, come on to the Bat Minute Listener's Cave on Facebook and let us know exactly what that is. I'm sure you're more than willing to go through all of Seinfeld again anyway. Oh, yeah. But still, you know, that might take a while. Yeah, yeah, Cook could come in, like, in the middle of Batman and Robin and be like, oh, yeah, I found <laughs> out, uh, yeah, it's, it's not in Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the Dan Waters draft of this, uh, of this film... We get a slightly different bit here that I liked, where we see Selena's desk, mm. and it, it it says in the in the draft here. <clears throat> let me prepare myself. She sullen. Oh God, I've messed it up now. <laughs> she sullenly scribbles "obey" on a post-it pad, which she then sticks on the edge of her computer beside a garden of other girlishly masochistic post-its. This is for her boyfriend. She's going "obey," and then. Oh, it's like, oh, oh Bay, oh, Bay, he's the best. And then she's putting up a, next to a picture of, <laughs> I don't know, friggin' what's his face from Greece too, Maximilian. What, what do you call that guy, actually? You're asking the wrong yeah. person. <laughs> well, you have any knowledge of Greece too that could save save this joke? Greece, I didn't know there was a Greece too. Oh, hold well, the phone. You're better off not knowing. <laughs> what? Yeah, but, but um, it, it, not only is there a Greece too, it starred Michelle Pfeiffer. So. Oh well, that's an. Uh, I'll look it up on Google and watch it. I'll rent it off Amazon Prime, which is apparently what you can do. She's she's very girly. You're saying obey and all the other little notes on her desk, but she's very... Yeah. Because in her wardrobe does... later on in the film, all of her stuff is pink and she's trashing it. Well, again, spoiler alert, she trashes her wardrobe. Ooh. Yeah. It's a shame she trashes some nice <laughs> clothes there, I think. But uh, <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it refers to... Uh, them as here you go girlishly masochistic post-its like don't have a sense of humor and <laughs> save it for your diary <laughs> she, and she puts them all around a computer and then she sadly gnaws a piece of licorice from a package labeled max and sighs out the window oh. she's eating his licorice that's quite a bold it's, it's, move it sounded very suggestive though like oh yeah she's eating his licorice yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god Niall come on <laughs> And how do you sadly gnaw on a piece of licorice? That's a that's an interesting. I'd way imagine of in the corner of your mouth, kind of half chewing. I think it's. I despise licorice, so I can only imagine eating it sadly. <laughs> to, be, to be frank, <laughs> yeah. 
I'm usually in tears if I have to eat it. Yeah, mm. I hate it. But uh, oh, licorice is great. What? Oh, that's so. Oh. That was Polly Preston for this week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're off the show. Um, all right, guys. Yeah, because again, I don't know if we said this on air, <laughs> Paul. You would uh, there was a sort of slight miscommunication, and you bought the first Batman to watch, and then midway through realized that Chris Walken wasn't in any of the scenes you were watching, and then realized it was the wrong movie. I did indeed, yes. But yes. you would have been happy to see that the, at the end of the first Batman, during the Joker's big parade, uh, there's actually big things of licorice all sorts all around him. So there you go. That's a, that's a thing you can, if you want to watch the end of that movie, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a thing you can, you can see. <laughs> I don't feel I need to watch the end of it now. Now I know that there's going to be licorice everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's ruined. Yeah, it's ruined, ruined for me forever. But uh, talking of big uh, things, we've got uh, this the weird Shrek cat head thing is now uh, in clock form, whereas a, a giant one was atop the building. Now it's in a clock form outside his department store, which is uh, you should note actually because I can't remember how many times you see the heads. Like the the big animatronic heads, at least. But you can actually go to a thing that it's not this exact head, but it's very, very, very similar. It's very obviously a deliberate reference to this in Arkham City. You can sort of glide about, and at the edge of one of the buildings is a big cat head that looks very, very much like this one. And uh, I remember uh, the first time I was playing the game, I was like, oh my god. And so, what are they trying to say? Like, Batman Returns is canon? That doesn't make any sense. And then it was just like, nah, it's, a, it's just an Easter egg. But. Uh, beyond that, I guess they're trying to make a little uh, reference to the Kit Kat clocks you can get with the you know, when the tail wags and the eyes move. It's just kind of like a. Sh- I've always wanted one of them. Why don't I just buy one? I'm a, I'm an adult. Damn it, I could afford to buy it. <laughs> but yeah, they came from like the 30s, so they were like a real. That's sort of tying into the whole retro vibe, I guess, of the movie. Would be like, oh yeah, because we're referencing a cat clock that came from the 30s. And um, yeah, but instead of the tail wagon, it's like the the hands of the clock or the whiskers and stuff. And I mean, I would, I would actually buy it if this was available as a like not the giant version, but if there was like a little mini version you could put in your house, I'd buy this as a clock. I think this is yeah. That is a note I've got. Like it says right here, why didn't they sell these? <laughs> I I would have bought. Maybe they did. I couldn't find them. I had a quick look. Um, I didn't see a product, an official one. But I would have paid anything for one of these. Just sat on my desk. Yeah, but well, sadly that was that was not to be. It reminds me a bit of an early cartoon of a Mickey Mouse face. If you put bigger yes. ears on it, so maybe it's a nod to Walt Disney because obviously this is a lot darker than a Disney film. Well, Disney's pretty dark sometimes. It is, yeah. The elephants. But... Uh, plus, um, Tim Burton used to work for Disney, so I guess maybe he would have like, oh, he would be aware of the Disney sort of. Uh, Aesthetic. Yeah, the, the aesthetic, but just even like the reputation of like, oh, Walt Disney, this beloved father figure, much like Max Shrek when he comes out to the crowds here. Everybody loves Max Shrek and everyone loves Walt Disney. But a lot of people say Walt Disney behind closed doors, bit nefarious, bit allegedly anti-Semitic and whatnot. So uh, so it's been a lot of darkness there. And of course, Max Shrek behind closed doors is a complete monster. So maybe there is like a little, a little, uh, you know, an attempt to Tim Burton to still a bit scary. He's like, I can't just make it a mouse, but I'll make it a cat so <laughs> that it looks a bit like Mickey Mouse. And that'll be a very subtle way enough. of like... Ah, uh, well, cats eat mice. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, ah, boom. we're onto it. Yeah. But that, that's the and thing, then, though, like, because when they come out and the crowd starts to swarm, and most notably, the mayor's sort of knocked behind. It's like the, the crowds are there for Max Shrek. They don't care about the mayor. He's sort of left hanging, and the crowds are just, they love, they love Max Shrek. And, you know, from what we said the rest of the movie, it's hard to ascertain why exactly. Like, he must have been a hell of a public speaker elsewhere. <laughs> but, you know, we're just kind of stuck with... Hey, who doesn't love capitalist millionaires? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like, was he like Arthur Fortune in The Simpsons? Like, what is it? Why do people love Max Shrek so much? Did he rebuild Gotham <laughs> after the Joker attack or something? Like, what... Maybe that is what he did. Like he poured money into the city. And he's like, yeah, yeah. I'm revitalizing everything. And well, he's created jobs, I suppose. You know, he's made this department store. But it, beyond the because he's, you know, the fact he's not particularly, you no, know, he's just a creepy looking guy. So it's just, I don't understand why. I don't understand why the American public would go for such an obviously corrupt, rich millionaire. <laughs> 
and then uh, take, take them into his, their hearts, and then you know try to get, you know applaud him when he comes out in public. That's some some like you know odd looking guy with weird hair and stuff. That seems like that could never actually happen in real life. That's all I'm saying. Of course not. No, no, no. Not in America. It's unrealistic. Yeah, I mean in the UK we got Boris Johnson. That's like we've seen it happen, but in America it would never happen. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> moving swiftly on mm. before we lose actually I don't care if I lose if I lose some listeners I don't I'm not interested but <laughs> you, you can you can depart if you're ardently going to support him to that level mm. that, that that little joke will defend you but you mean support <laughs> Max Shrek oh, man, I, don't, yes, I can't, yes, I, can't I can't abide anyone supporting Max Shrek he's obviously a, a horrible person so uh, <laughs> of course of course yeah He's but, horrible. But, but, oh no, I've, that's another spoiler. He he's horrible, but he does save his son. Oh, yeah, it does have that yeah. sort of. So there's the redeeming feature there. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, that's quite a bit away. But uh, yeah, we do have much like in like the, the the Sam Raimi Spider-Man film. Like you're introduced to the idea that like, oh, J. Jonah Jameson is such an asshole. But then when the Green Goblin shows up, like looking for like who's taking these pictures of Spider-Man, he goes out of his way to be like, I don't know who it is, even though that he knows it's Peter Parker, and it's like. Oh, so he does have a noble side. And then, yeah, at the end of this, Max Shrek could sacrifice his kid, but he's like, no, I, I want you to take me instead. So, yeah, there is a, a shred of redemption within this guy. But um, but anyway, one thing, I remember we made, uh, made the joke last week that I wanted to keep a recurring thing going of there's a very obvious bit of trivia about Max Shrek that we haven't mentioned. And I was like, oh, how long can we go on without mentioning it? I'm probably going to have to bring it up right now <laughs> because uh, the next shot is of the the you know the sewers of Gotham and a very creepy shadow going across the the wall with the sort of Ooh. short stubby you know person holding an, a, an umbrella aloft and who could this be? Oh, it's one of my favorite shots in the movie. This I'll be honest. It's lovely it's... colors, lovely colors. Great colors, great framing. It's it's creepy. It, it's genuinely quite like unsettling. Mm. It's very influenced by like German expressionist cinema, and of course, mm. I would say it's almost a sort of deliberate nod to the shadow going up the stairs in Nosferatu. And of course, yeah. Nosferatu starred an actor called Max Schreck. So there you go. We, Gave away that bit of trivia. Like I was hoping by like minute eighty, we'll be like, we're still not going to mention it. You can we can bring up <laughs> vampires all you want. We're not going to say that. That's everybody knows that. But now, yeah, they've got it out of the way. Max Shrek. That's, it was a good joke while it lasted. Yeah, I don't think people even laughed at it the first time. But <laughs> uh, I will say also, I, I kind of I wonder if this is supposed to be a deliberate thing because of the the way that shadows gliding along the water. It's and we've had a lot of these religious things of like oh yeah the basket and the reeds at the beginning the thirty three years later which is obviously the age Jesus is supposed to have died in the in the you know the New Testament and then we looks at the penguin's shadow sorry spoilers it's the penguin his shadow <laughs> what it's the penguin oh, 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 good God Almighty <laughs> cover your ears Paul you don't want to hear the rest of this <laughs> I have headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah we do get the uh, have the appearance of the penguin's shadow sort of walking on water i was wondering if that was like a thing they were trying to do or if it's just me been like i'm just reading i'm having to watch this thing one minute at a time i'm gonna reach for everything i possibly can <laughs> <laughs> oh and the light at the end of the tunnel which would be god in heaven <laughs> yeah <laughs> just desperately clawing at things now <laughs> <laughs> no, we've cracked it again. Yet again, we've uh, discovered the truth. Uh, but you never know. Well, come on, <laughs> just give, give me something. It might, it might be a deliberate thing, did it? But I'm saying, I was and... being serious there. I wasn't taking the mic. <laughs> I, I would say there's there's also um, three pipes running along the tunnel. Uh... And, uh, was it the three three three? I'm not down with religion. The, the... There's <laughs> the Holy Ghost. The Father, the, the Son, and the yeah, Holy the Father, Ghost. The yeah. There's three. It's three. Yeah, okay, but, okay. Oh, we think we cracked it. That's it's, it's yeah. very desperate, but we're getting there. The thing is, I thought your your light at the tunnel, end of the tunnel thing was like nah, but that that could be though. If we were already if they were already putting in like a religious thing, and then they had deliberately put three pipes, it could be. Yeah. You never know. So yeah, yeah, there it is. <laughs> the the music in this scene as well is just it's sublime. Mm. Not the band sublime, obviously. That's a, that's a they're awful. Well, I've lost more listeners there. They got Sublime in to record the soundtrack for this? 
yeah, yeah, Sublime, the, what they like a scar kind of a thing. <laughs> <laughs> they do the soundtrack to this. Um, but no, this music is just, oh, it adds to the, the shot mm. and it just creeps you out. This this is some top-notch work. The whole soundtrack to this movie is Yeah. Amazing. Although, again, talking about, like, religious elements, because, like, once, you know, we, once we leap out of the sewer again, we do have people, like, desperately trying to just touch Max Shrek. He's walking through the crowds. Again, it's like... It's like Jesus arriving in Jerusalem. The people, like, I'm surprised they're not getting out the freaking palms and stuff for them. Like, they're really, people are probably just full-grown men in, like, their 40s and 50s, it looks like, are just dying to touch Max Shrek, which is crazy. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what did he do? He, he's hot. That's what it is. Is hot he hot? Hot stuff. I guess, though, Paul, you, didn't, you weren't here for the first season where we had our, you know, ongoing debate about whether Jack Nicholson was considered sexy or not. Because I was mm. under the impression that he was supposed to be, and then every other guest was like, no. So, <laughs> Well, having watched half the film this morning, I would say no, he's, he's not. Ah! Oh, my God. But then, okay, Chris Walken. What's, what, what's the vibe with him? Because I've heard people say that Chris Walken is sexy as well. And yeah. I don't believe that one. I don't believe that one for a second, but I've heard it been said. I've always been very scared of Christopher Walken, so uh, no. Yeah, no, that no. that seems like a more logical approach to him. It's like, yeah, he's scary. He's a scary guy. Although I I had a little when I was again clawing at ideas, um, I was looking at his face, and somewhere in his eyebrows and his eye makeup, he reminds me of Grace Jones, and she's sexy. So, <laughs> ah, okay, okay. If, if you look at and... Grace Jones's makeup and eyebrows when she's in uh, James Bond, there's. There's a Christopher Walken air there. Mm. Ah, okay. Wasn't, but which which Bond was Grace Jones in though? Because was was she in the one with Chris Walken? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. whoa! Now it's um uh, a view to a kill. Maybe they like swap tips, and she was like, "Chris, I gotta sort out your your eyebrows here, <laughs> and your whole your whole forehead area is just off." <laughs> That'd be amazing. They just sat and did each other's makeup. Yeah. I, I love this idea now. <laughs> But uh, but then then we get a little bit of um, sort of uh, political talk. It's sort of a continuation of you know the fact that Max Shrek was pitching this power plant, and the mayor told him flat out, "No, this ain't happening." Um, and Max starts making, even though he says it's not a threat, it is a veiled threat of you know he has enough signatures from Shrek employees alone to warrant a recall, and then though that's not a threat, those are simple numbers, and. The thing, and then the, the mayor responds with, uh, you know, like, oh, that, you know, that might be Max, but you don't have an issue and you sure as hell don't have a candidate. Which brings up the massive question to me, is that people here love Max Shrek. Later on, Max Shrek uses the Penguin as a tool to get elected to office because he can use him as a proxy and sort of basically yeah. utilize, you know, have power via Oswald Cobblepot. If Max Shrek is so beloved by the people, why doesn't he just run for mayor himself? Because that's my note as well. Yeah, I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, like, and even I guess you could you could lean on, oh, you don't have an issue, but then because he, oh, I guess you come out and be like, oh, I just want to build the power plant. That's all I want. That's the only reason I want to be mayor is because I want to build the power plant, and the mayor won't let me. Much like friggin' Henry the Eighth or whatever, <laughs> just been like the Catholic Church won't let me get a divorce. Oh, what the hell, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Max Shrek again, he could pull the same tactics of the Penguin later on, who does the whole "here's a crime wave." Mm. The mayor's not doing anything about it. Uh, about it, I should be mayor. Max Shrek could do that just by himself, and at the same results, he just wouldn't have to deal with the Penguin. Is it because it might seem a bit suspect that he's... Because he is only doing it for his power plant, mm. really. So would it, would that seem like a weird vested interest if he started making different regulations for the building? And <laughs> Would that be too obvious? What? But then he's endorsing the candidate. I, oh, I don't know. Yeah, because that, that, there's so much stuff that, you know, if you look into any political campaign... You're obviously going to see, like, you, you're, you know, no politician is 100% honest is the, the thing. And if you look into what could potentially be going on behind the scenes, you know, the, there's always going to be some shady dealings. So the idea of Max Shrek just like, I just want to make a power plant. I'm going to be married to do it. And then I'm starting to change these little regulations along the way. But, you know, I'm 
kissing enough babies and stuff so people don't notice. Doesn't strike me as being all that strange. So, yeah, it's I mean, probably better get... to be um, behind so you can manipulate what the mayor does, and you're not the face of it. That's yeah. surely a better power plan. A good, I guess. I suppose you could say that. Yeah, the the be the yeah the the person behind the person is because then if they go down, you're still there, but like, hey, like I didn't do anything. I can still have my fingers and so yeah, maybe that could be a a decent uh, interpretation. Why they didn't? Um, why they didn't either? Just make you know Oswald Cobblepot be <laughs> be this this character, or why not just have the you know it be Max Shrek versus. I can tell, you know, they wouldn't have made it Max Shrek versus Batman outright because people wouldn't have been interested in, in that. They want an iconic <laughs> character like the Penguin to be the villain. But anywho. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to come in there. I thought, I thought you had more to say. Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll be getting, you know, obviously there's a lot of politics in this friggin' movie, so we'll be getting into it in a, in a big bad way during the actual mayoral campaign that the, you know, Shrek and Cobblepot are behind. As somebody who I work full time but part time do a degree on the side in my spare time, uh, it's history and politics. I'm more interested in talking about the politics in this really than I am in doing the degree. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, can't my degree just be about the politics of the Batman universe? That'd be great. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, is there anything else people have for this particular minute? Before no, oh, I'm tapped out of notes. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I just have how Christopher Walken is always evil and they shouldn't trust him, but they don't know that. They don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> At the end, they, they yank off the wig and like, oh my God, it was Chris Walken the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, weirdly though, that ties into something we've, we've brought up before. Um, like, just looking at him, right? I love how he looks. It's an amazing look. But let's be honest, if you just saw him, you would probably think, this guy's a villain. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Why, why do people not clock onto this fact and, uh, you know, at least investigate him? He seems very suspect from mm. minute one. I mean, not to go down too dark an avenue, like the most, one of the most beloved children's television presenters in the UK uh, of the past 100 years yeah. was revealed to be one of the most despicable human beings after his death. But he was beloved, yeah. even though he looked like an absolute scumbag on, on visibly to look at him he's like oh yeah, i wouldn't trust that guy as far as i could throw him just look at him mm-hmm. people love turned him. out you shouldn't yeah and it was one of those things of like it was oh you're always told don't judge a book by its cover but that should have been like uh maybe maybe as a as a nation everyone should have joined together and went i think i don't i don't like the look of this guy man <laughs> he looks a bit scummy <laughs> but uh, so it you know it can happen is the unfortunate thing yeah but, uh, but yeah, if no one else has got anything for this particular minute, then I'm really... Oh, actually, why is everyone wearing a hat? Uh, I guess maybe because they're still, you know, Tim Burton uh, and um, Anton first in the first movie. They had a whole thing about, like, the retro design of Gotham that they wanted to make it not look like the 80s. They wanted to make it look like a sort of film noirish, maybe 40-ish thing with modern influences. So it would be sort of timeless because you couldn't peg down exactly when it was supposed to be set. And of course, one of the things in like the 40s is like men wore a lot of hats and women wore a lot of hats. So I guess they're just continuing that trend of like, yeah, just stick fedoras on everybody. And it looks like, is this 1992 <laughs> or is it 19, like friggin' 47? Like what's going on? Okay, well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you appreciate that, Niall, as a hat wearer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was very... Uh, as a very jealous of many of the hats I've seen throughout the entire show uh, since the beginning of the last movie, actually. That was a very informed answer you had for me there, so I'm I'm impressed with that. <laughs> I mean, we we you know we did cover the entire uh, <laughs> first movie, so if I if I can't remember a tidbit from that about like why people are dressing in a certain way, it's like ah. Oh, the show would have been a disaster. So. No, I've wiped it all from my brain. Once that first season was done, I just deleted everything. So the John be later on. I was like, Jack Nicholson was in the first one. What? <laughs> what, was, what else was he in? He was sexy. No, he wasn't. Oh yeah. I said, like, now it's got that soundbite, Polly. I'm just going to cut everything else you said about Jack Nicholson out, and then just put that little bit in there. Yep, Jack Nicholson. He was sexy. Yep. <laughs> That's the tagline for our whole show. <laughs> He's even sexier when he's sadly eating licorice, but that's that's yet to be filmed. 
You could sexily eat licorice, I suppose, but that's also bizarre. I, I want to see Jack Nicholson sexily eating licorice. That's my new <laughs> goal in life. Yep, I think that's that's a that should be. I was going to say it should be like a Patreon pledge, but like g- give us <laughs> money and then we'll start a campaign to get Jack Nicholson to sexually eat licorice because God knows how much longer we've got. We've got to raise the money right now, damn it. I think you could do it. Start a, yeah, just a petition. Get it going. Help us out, everyone. Get get us in touch with these people because uh, strangely, he didn't come on the show last season. Oh. Um, <laughs> I think it was just we uh, may have uh, tried. scheduling scheduling difficulties. That was, that was all it was. He was totally down for it. But then he just like I, I know because I, I, I yeah I don't want to don't want to boast but like I, I was talking to him personally and he said he loved the show really really wanted to be on it but he was just like nah I've got I've got so many th- so many balls in the air you know it just he just couldn't happen couldn't happen unfortunately yeah, and plus he didn't want to detract from our stellar work you know he thought he, he would be the centerpiece and that wasn't right yeah yeah so yeah. we'd like to just personally thank Jack Nicholson for not coming on the show <laughs> <laughs> thanks man. But uh, on that note, we are going to head off into the dark, dark night. Um, Polly, do you have anything you'd like to plug or promote or tell our listeners where they can find you online? Absolutely. So I am taking my show Church of Phil to Edinburgh. We are in the Clutie Dumpling at nine o'clock, which you can find online or on the Free Fringe PBH booklet. It's going to be great. The show is about a cult and the audience play prospective cult members. And we've got a really cool PowerPoint. It's a lot of fun. It's a little bit interactive. It's a little bit interactive, but don't be scared by that because we're all friends in the Church of Phil. <laughs> I love a cool PowerPoint. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. And we've got enough <laughs> blood sacrifice on, you know, to keep it tasteful. So hey. it's, all, it's all fun. The more, the better. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do do uh, do check that out and check oh, us yes. out. And we're f- oh, yeah. Fire Donkey Productions. Fire Donkey Productions. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Ah, uh-huh. yes. Uh, send tweets over. Our, our guests like getting tweets going, you were great, or even you were terrible, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to which, which you weren't, let me just say. <laughs> and you won't be, because you'll be, you'll be back on Wednesday's show. Ooh. And we will be up back on Wednesday, strangely enough, as well. In the meantime, if you want to chat to us, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, yeah, just look us up, Bat Minute. We're on Tumblr as well, but we never use it. If you message me, I will use the Tumblr. That's a guarantee. So get get doing it. We get a lot of Facebook stuff, a lot of Twitter stuff. No Tumblr. It's a shame. Obviously, we're not hip. We're not down with the kids. So but that, that made me sound very unhip saying that. <laughs> um, but send us a message. We'll reply. And give us a review on iTunes. That's always lovely. And we will see you again on Wednesday for Minute... 11. Next time, a wall of fame and a walk of shame. Shrek prepares for a public palaver, and his present persona promptly comprehends a predicament. But while the Shrek of the past greets a king, an oak, and the candy man, will Selina realize things aren't going according to plan? Find out... Wednesdays, same bat pod, different bat minutes.